Go. GMC? Go. Go and throttle up, Capcom. Boots or flight? Go ahead, flight. You copy. Okay, status. Fido? Go. Guys? Okay. Nico 8 plus 4 2. Roger 8 4 2. Go. Go and fight. Go and fight. Stand by, negative C. Flight Mark. Roger. How you doing, GMC? Still building up air, it's fine, but they're not too large. Turn status, Fido. Go. Booster. Prop. Go fly. Econ. Eagle. Go fly. Go negative return, Charlie. Go fly. Okay. Trying to get configured here, fly with my recorder. T minus 30 seconds. Houston, we're 20 seconds. Cameras are running. Roger, Joe. Outboard middle green, valve closed. 10, 9, 8, 7. In orbit around the Earth, a space shuttle on one of its many scientific and technological missions. On Earth, flight controllers and experimenters in Houston and in locations around the world. Between them flow voice communications, systems information, experimental data, communication that we have come to accept and take for granted. In previous United States manned spaceflight programs, Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, and Skylab, It took as many as 15 ground stations to maintain contact with the Earth orbiting spacecraft. The early shuttle flights would use basically the same network. With the spacecraft in low orbit around the Earth, each station can maintain contact from horizon to horizon. As the shuttle passes beyond the horizon of one station, it will be picked up by another. Since there are a limited number of suitable locations available to put these tracking stations, there are times when the shuttle will be out of communications range, sometimes for up to an hour. Through each tracking station flow the myriad pieces of data needed for a successful mission, telemetry from the shuttle, command signal, voice contact. Information flows to and from the tracking stations through the Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland, central control for this tracking and communications network. Communications between Goddard and Mission Control at the Johnson Space Center in Houston is via two satellite channels. While this network will be used for the first shuttle flights, on two early operational missions, the shuttle will place two tracking and data relay satellites into Earth orbit. These satellites will be sent into orbits at altitudes of 23,000 miles. At this altitude, they will travel around the Earth at exactly the same speed at which the Earth rotates. This will keep them positioned over the same point on the Earth's surface at all times. This is called a geosynchronous orbit and is the type used by virtually all communications satellites. The orbiting shuttle will locate and lock on to the satellite, allowing nearly continuous communications with Earth. With this system, only two or three ground stations will be needed, rather than the previous number of up to 15. In addition, they are much less expensive to operate and will use an ultra-high frequency range, permitting data transmission at nearly 50 times present rate. This is an important factor in future shuttle flights. 12 Houston, we're standing by with a map update for... Uh, On previous missions, a large amount of information was sent to the spacecraft by voice. It was hand copied by the astronauts, then rechecked with mission control. This consumed many valuable working hours during a flight. This satellite system, transmitting data at nearly 50 times present capabilities, will allow complete printed documents, including drawings and black and white photographs, to be sent directly to or from the orbiting shuttle. This will help assure accuracy and free the astronauts for other mission activities. 
As the orbiter flies its mission, other communication systems are also in operation. Onboard television will enable experimenters on Earth to work as though next to the astronauts, seeing what they see, even assuming direct control of experiments and payloads. Another onboard communication system allows the crew to check out the operation of payload systems at distances out to 10 miles so that interplanetary probes can be monitored prior to launch from Earth orbit into deep space. This is used in conjunction with an Earth-based monitoring system. If any malfunctions are discovered, the probe can be repaired in orbit or returned to Earth for repair and later launching. Short-range communications allow the flight crew to maintain contact with the astronaut while they work outside the spacecraft. Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California controls these deep space launches once the spacecraft has been deployed by the shuttle crew. Control and communications will be maintained through the three stations of the deep space network. These stations are located in California, Australia, and Spain. Through this network, commands will be sent to keep the space probe on course in its distant voyage. The probe can be pointed at specific objects scientists want to see, and those sites transmitted to Earth through the deep space network. Space communications already have a significant impact on our everyday lives. Satellites have produced a communications revolution on Earth. The missions of the space shuttle will take us into a new era in communications, where advances such as these will become routine.